Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this webinar on the state of e-commerce supply chain optimization. I'm Mindy Chahal, Head of Content at Digiday Media. And before we dive in, I just want to give you a few things on the structure of today's session. So I'll provide a quick introduction to SPO, and then we'll kick off the conversation with Pubmatic. Following the discussion, we'll have some time for Q&A. So um, throughout this webinar, please submit your questions at any point. Um, you'll find a questions tab on the Facebook webinar platform, just type in the questions there and we'll get to it at the end of the session. Everyone registered will also get a recording of this um, webinar via email tomorrow. Did you miss anything or want to revisit any part of the conversation? So today I'm joined by um, Emma Newman, who is Pubmatic's Chief Revenue Officer. Um, I just want to give you a bit of background on Emma. Um, Emma serves as a pioneer in the digital media space with 20 plus years experience in all marketing disciplines, digital communications and business development. Emma joined Pubmatic in 2014 as Senior Director of International Marketing, was promoted to Vice President of International Marketing and later took on a commercial role as VP UK. In August this year, Emma's, Emma was promoted to Chief Revenue Officer for EMEA. Um, prior to Pubmatic, Emma spent 10 years at MSN in several marketing roles before transitioning to lead their business excellence function across the media. She then served as AOL's Senior Director of UK Marketing, where she built and led both the commercial and the consumer marketing team. Emma later joined the team that launched Huffington Post in EMEA and sat on the board of Clear Channel UK as their marketing director, helping to drive their transition into the digital space. Throughout Emma's time at Pubmatic, she's proven to be a leader cultivating a deep understanding of its products and working with its customers and partners to help them take advantage of the opportunities that programmatic has to offer. In her new role as Chief Revenue Officer for EMEA, strategy, change and bringing people together continue to be the central theme in her career. And thank you, Emma, for, for joining us today. Wow, thank you and thanks for that really kind introduction. Um, and uh, thanks for hosting the webinar and also for partnering with us on um, this really important piece of research. Great, thank you Emma. Um, so I'm really excited to get into that research, but before we dive in, I just wanted to give a bit of background to the, to the project um, and a bit of background to the report that we've been working on over the last few months. Um, so back in 2017, Digiday actually wrote a WTF on supply path optimization. And I won't read the whole thing out today, um, but in summary, it says that SPO gives media buyers the ability to bid on and win inventory at the most reasonable price, and it lets publishers maximize their revenue over the long run. So fast forward to today, um, a lot more has happened. Uh, we see that advertisers and agencies are still looking to assess the value of their tech partners, um, and that's resulted in optimizing the supply paths to make sure that every bit of their budget spent has an impact. Um, so with SPO, there's there's an expectation that it will improve kind of quality of inventory or remove bad actors from the chain and therefore you know improve that thing that we're all looking for in programmatic, which is transparency. Um, to kind of find out the tr any truth behind this and what the actual reality is, we asked the Dish Day audience. Um, so we surveyed our UK buy side audience in September this year. Um, the sample was around 100 media professionals and it included advertisers, agencies and VSPs. What we got is some really great granular data into the progress of SPO in the UK, um, different types of approaches, why people, are, why people are doing it and what this means for SSPs in the market. Um, it's also important to note that it doesn't just affect buy side and we'll be talking about that, that a bit later today. Some hope that publishers will also start to have a greater influence over what's defined as you know the optimal path to, to their supply. Um, so we also spoke to people like Omnicom, Mindshare, eBay and the Trade Desk to add some extra insight. So the report is out now, it's, on, it's online both on Digiday and Publicit, but we'll be taking you through it today and adding some context and advice around what we found and, and what that means for you. Um, so just a, a reminder of today's discussion, it will kind of show you some of that new research, it will show you the biggest benefits and concerns around optimization, it will show how SPO impacts UK buyers um, SSP relationships, um, SPO's impact on publishers, and Emma will talk you through four core cool steps to how you can put SPO into action today. Um, but Emma, welcome, thanks for being here. Thank you. Um, so let's keep the session off. Um, Emma, can you tell us a bit about the status of SPO in the UK, 
um, how buyers are thinking about it and how they're approaching it? Yeah, I think that um, actually the data in the research that uh, you guys have undertaken um, very much correlates with the conversations that we've been having with with buyers over the last 12 months or so in the UK market. Um, SPO is definitely very high on their agendas. Um, as it says here, 87% of buyers are actively implementing SPO. Um, and another 6% are planning to implement this in the next year or so. So as I said, that definitely correlates with the conversations that we've been having. Um, when you think about SPO approach and how buyers should be approaching SPO, I think, you know, first and foremost, what they need to do is carefully evaluate their SSP partners um, in the UK and then decide really what's important for them when they start to think about SPO and whether those SPO partners or whether the SSPs will actually deliver what's important to them. From the conversations we've been having in the UK, um, what we're seeing is that most buyers are choosing an SSP that delivers the most effective path to the inventory that they want to access and then they are shifting their spend to those SSPs. I think it's important, the word effective means many things to many people, so I think in this instance, let me just be clear, when we say effective, we're referring to providing the most direct route to the inventory that the buyer wants to purchase. Um, and I think that this really sort of harks back a little bit to the rise of header bidding, which did have some indirect knock-on effects, one of which being auction duplication. Um, and this is something that people have been talking about for a while now. And a recent study by Jantz Media shows that more than 60% of publishers are working with more than 10 exchange partners. And in fact, over 25% of publishers are working with more than 20 exchange partners. So that's a lot of paths. Um, so I think one of the first things that buyers are, are saying is, okay, what is my most direct path to the supply that I want to access? And then using that almost as a basis for deciding which SSP partners they want to have an SPO with. Okay, great. Um, I mean, when we were doing this research, I think 87% actively implementing this PO, um, it's, a, it's a very high number, but we were talking offline before, Emma, um, and, you, and you mentioned kind of how this effort sometimes isn't supported internally, um, we're still kind of seeing some of that reflected in the data. Yeah, I think that it's a sort of a, it's like most things, it's sort of a bit of a chicken and egg. Um, we see there's a lot of buzz certainly from the people that we're talking to, and everyone is definitely interested, you know, in SPO. But at the same time, interest doesn't always correlate to action. Um, mm. and actually getting, you know, and there is some effort required on, you know, on both parts to, to decide to implement a really robust SPO. Um, and so therefore, it's not always everybody's top priority. Um, as you said, we, we are seeing this in the data where 76% of brands, agencies, and DSPs are, ex are, you know, are saying that actually it's the prioritization of the implementation of the SPO um, that's actually causing them the biggest challenge. Mm. When we ask them why, I think there's a couple of things, and one is definitely about return. So, you know, as with all things in life, everybody's really busy, everyone has a massive to-do list, um, you know, and making things top of your to-do list generally is a direct correlation in how up, how far up something is on the to-do list with regards to how much return it's going to drive. And the more return you can see, the higher up the to-do list it, um, it naturally moves and therefore it becomes a higher priority. And mm. I think one of the key reasons why you know, it's not moving up the to-do list is that there's still a lot of confusion. I think there's still a lot of confusion about what SPO actually is. And importantly, I think there's a lot of confusion about the return that an SPO will deliver um, to buyers and to publishers. Um, so I think that's actually a very good um, reason why pieces of research like the one that we're talking about today are vital, because hopefully this will go, you know, go some way towards removing some of that confusion, and therefore the buzz will actually turn into action. Yeah, it's definitely something that um, I think we kind of went 
into detail in terms of what the different types of approaches to the SPO there are and um, we kind of centered on these on these three that we can see on the screen. Um, can you break these down a little bit and what these different options actually mean and what they look like for those who, who may not know? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's um, I think it's really important. So you know, we've got here on the graph that there are three approaches, but I think that it's important to say that regardless of the approach, um, all of these are really linked to supply and making sure that buyers can access the highest quality, most transparent inventory. Um, so regardless of the approach, I think that that is generally the end game. But as you say, there are there are three types of approaches. The first one is really around consolidation um, and consolidating the number of SSPs that a buyer works with. If you remember, I just referenced back the research with Janssen here where, you know, lots of publishers are working with multiple SSPs. Um, and really buyers need to understand you know, which ones are really bringing value. Now, value will be determined by the buyer's requirements, but you know, which ones are really bringing value? And if they're not bringing value, should you really be working with them? I think buyers are determining that that's probably not a great use of their resource, and therefore they're starting to consolidate the number of SSPs that they're working with. Now, when you consolidate, obviously, you can um, have much more strategic and deeper relationships with those SSPs, which again will drive growth and efficiency. Mm. The second approach is around assessment of supply. So making sure that a buyer chooses to work with an SSP um, who provide the supply that is high on their priority list um and make sure that they provide them with the access to do this and that is often a qualifying criteria when a buyer chooses an ssp to work with mm. now the smallest bar here is around algorithms and that's really referring to an approach that some dsps are taking whereby they leverage their data and machine learning to analyze the supply path in real time based on different metrics so as I said, really different approaches, but the same end game, which is accessing the supplier that is of the highest prior priority um, to the buyer. Mm, okay, brilliant. Thank you for that context. Um, I think it's important to kind of to know the different approaches. Um, and another thing that came up is is kind of we all know that so many players and so many partners in the programmatic chain, but. Um, it really kind of drives down to, to who's implementing it and, and who is driving it and who's responsible for, for driving the SPO kind of movement. Um, with that in mind, the, the research shows that kind of it's mostly implemented at the agency level. Would you say that the agency is the one responsible for driving it? Um, partly. So yes, the research does say does show that it's the agencies, but I actually think in fact, the, the core players, if you like, in the ecosystem who are really responsible for driving the SPO movement are the brands. Mm. So what we've seen from our conversations in market um, is that it is very much the brands that are pushing the agencies and they're pushing the agencies for greater transparency. Um, that's partly due to efficiency and obviously wanting to have greater understanding of how their digital budgets are being spent. And also they want to see how the money is actually flowing through the buying path. And of course, they, um, they want to understand that their, their brands are actually being then viewed in um, brand safe environments. Mm. So what we've seen obviously is the brands are actually the agencies. And therefore, if that's what the brands want, the agencies are obviously following suit um, off the back of this need, this ask, this desire from the brand. And I think that it's really that that's driving the uh, consolidation of supply partners. Um, and I think that we can see this in the research where actually it's the brands that are having the highest active implementation rate, rate for SPOs um, mm -hmm. at 95%. And in fact, only 4% of them are not planning to execute some form of SPO over the next 12 months or so. So yes, agencies are implementing but I actually think the brands are the catalyst. Okay. That's interesting. Like I like that line, kind of the brands are becoming the agency. Um, 
so when we were conducting the research, um, it did come up as a concern publishers that the SPA process was becoming a kind of a one-way buyer exercise versus it, versus it being built with, in partnership with publishers. Um, mm -hmm. We didn't actually hold publishers in the creation of this research, but I wanted to ask, um, should the SPO conversation involve publishers? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, publishers are at the end of the chain. I mean, this is all really about making sure that the brand you know, is seen um, on, on the right publisher. So I think that publishers are one of the key stakeholder groups that you know, are definitely key to SPO success. Um, I also think that they would benefit from more thought leadership in market uh, so that they understood better the uh, positive effects on SPOs for publishers. I think as you, as you rightly said, most conversations really have been with the buy side around SPO and you know, publishers mm. are quite rightly going, well, actually, is this, is this good for me or is this really just about, you know, the buyers and what's good for the buyers? I think that if we look at this holistically and, you know, as an industry, we're quite guilty of looking at things in silos and, you know, this is buy, this is sell. I think we need to start looking at this holistically. And if we look at this holistically, you know, it can't be good for one without hopefully being good for the other. Um, I think it's really important that, I think that's why it's really important that both buyers and sellers work with trusted partners. Um, and I think that's why that, you know, we've made it a, a focus to ensure that any SPO conversations we have with buyers ultimately lead to increased spend and greater revenue opportunities for our publisher portfolio. Mm, okay, brilliant. Um, and then, I mean, it's clear that SPO has an impact on SSPs as well. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think that, you know, one of the biggest impacts, I guess, um, for SSPs, as I mentioned earlier, is really the consolidation. So buyers choosing to consolidate the number of partners that they work with. Um, and I think this research, you know, as these, as you can see on the screen here, these stats bear that out. 71% of buyers are looking to consolidate the number of partners that they're going to work with, um, which sounds like an all, you know, a, a lot, and it is a lot, but actually what we're finding is that is only 9% of these buyers have actually started this consolidation process. Um, so that, rep that sort of represents an enormous opportunity for SSPs to be part of that group that a buyer chooses to work with. And that's why at Pubmatic, we're being very proactive in our efforts so that we can be one of those chosen supply partners of choice for buyers. Mm. Okay, brilliant. And then um, I think what the research also is the top kind of goals for SPO. Um, and you mentioned some of them earlier, sort of brand safety and reducing the risk of fraud. So the SSPs, is it really important that they have these anti-fraud measures in place? Oh, gosh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's one of the most important things that you can you can have in place. And it's certainly something that's expected. It's, it's, when we first started having conversations around SPO, sort of 12 to 18 months ago, that was a differentiator. And it still is to some extent, but it's just becoming table stakes. Um, you know, if you don't have these measures in place, you know, it's going to be very difficult as an SSP to, to be part of to be part of these conversations moving forward. I think it's um, mm. I think SSPs do everything that they possibly can to ensure that they have the highest inventory quality possible, which will then give the buyers confidence. You know, and, and rebuild back the trust that um, the pipes are clean. Um, and that buyers are buying from low risk, high quality environments. But I think it's not just about inventory quality. I think it's that, obviously, but it's that combined with the transparency into the spend that will put SSPs in the best position to partner with buyers on an SPO. Mm. You know, there are things that have happened in the market recently that have, you know, They've got lots of noise, and rightly so. Efforts such as ASDOT TXT, which make it possible for everyone to see who actually 
is officially authorized to sell inventory. Um, mm. Appaz.txt has recently come into market, um, doing the same for the app space, which I think is absolutely critical if brands are going to be prepared to move their their budgets into the in-app space. I think that you know, a lack of transparency and a concern around risk um, has stopped brands moving into, into in-app, but I think that that is definitely um, changing. Mm. We, at Pubmatic, we um, release our own quarterly index, um, specifically around the mobile space, um, and our Q3 piece is just released, and that's shown that of the top 1,000 apps globally, 27% of them have now adopted the appads.txt file, which is good progress, um, but obviously we hope to see this adoption continue. Um, and I think it's the SSPs that support these kinds of initiatives. Uh, and also things like sellers.json, which is bringing even more transparency um, by showing who is a direct seller versus an intermediary, mm. what we enable an SSP to contribute to reducing fraud and programmatic and obviously boost brand safety. Mm, okay. There's um there's obviously lots going on in terms of initiatives and partnerships. Um, and partnering with SSPs is another theme that we saw emerge. Um, but I mean for me, I I don't know enough, I'm not in it enough, but can you help us maybe paint a picture of what that might look like? Yeah, I think um, I think it's something that can take on many different forms, actually, on many different levels. It could involve a buyer providing a list of features that they want from an SSP in order for the SSP to be part of their consolidated list, if you like. And those things could be, you know, features such as direct billing, um, being able to provide curated marketplaces, providing access to log level data. Um, identity ingestion, data and segment targeting. I mean, these, I mean, the list could almost be endless. Um, but I think it's important that the buyers are really transparent about what it is they're looking for so that they can work in partnership with their chosen SSPs to ensure that the SSPs understand what the buyer wants and then they can ensure that they are de developing those features on their platforms. Mm. I think it's very much more a collaborative effort. Um, I think that you know, people want to get into more granular detail. They want solutions based on combined data sets. Um, I think it's definitely, as I mentioned before, about SSPs being able to provide things like transparency, anti-fraud, inventory quality. I mean, it really does depend on the buyer. Um, and it depends, again, on transparency from the buyer to their SSP partners. Be really clear about what it is you want um, mm. and then work in partnership so that your chosen your chosen partners can develop what it is that you want but there's no one size that fits all i'm afraid it would, that would just be too simple <laughs> yeah I, I i fear that might have been um from some of the the responses to some of this i mean um it's interesting though and it's been great to kind of dive in some of the research even just for myself kind of looking at the data and just understanding a bit more about what's going on in the background um but before we kind of wrap up to the research part of it um it'd be great to get a bit of an overview of, of what the steps are for embarking on an SPA journey and sort of the different things that people should be mindful of yeah um so I think that at Pubmatic, having now sort of been talking and implementing these uh, the SPOs for a while now, I think there are four key things that um, a buyer should undertake um, as part of this process. I think first and foremost, they need to you know, look under the hood and do an internal assessment. Um, I think they need to understand their current state. Um, they need to think about, you know, how many SSPs are they buying through? Where are the majority of their impressions coming from? Do you need to buy specific inventory through specific SSPs? And if so, why? And I think if they can understand those questions, um, they can probably come to a few easy conclusions early on, such as identifying those SSPs that are not providing, you know, cost effective access to inventory or actually not bringing value. 
and that could be a very easy way of reducing the number of SSPs and consolidating your partners. I think that once they've done that, you know, if they want to consolidate further, then they, they need to start to really evaluate the SSP partners. Um, by doing that, it will allow them to understand the differences between their supply path partners. Um, it will help them to, you know, they need to be able to understand whether they feel comfortable to share data, um, to go with them, you know, to go to them with that wish list. Um, making sure that they're choosing partners that are going to be prepared to listen to what they need and then react accordingly. Mm. Now, if they've done those two things, by that point, you know, as a buyer, you should be fairly comfortable um, in understanding which of your SSPs have the potential to be long-term partners. And I think that's what this is really about. This is about moving from having vendor relationships um, to having long-term partnerships. Um, I think that, you know, the consolidation method of SSPs also depends on the DSP that a buyer is using. So most DSPs offer some customization, um, such as being able to turn an SSP on or off. And they can also do weighting in favor of certain SSPs. So don't forget, if you choose an SSP, that's great. But you also need to make sure that you know, your DSP is aware of that as well. You need mm. to keep in mind that you need to have you know conversations with both the dsp and the ssp mm, okay. um, and then of course it's about ongoing optimization so you know 12 months from now your ideal optimization or your ideal partner i guess um profile may change um and will shift as time goes on so make sure as a buyer you're paying attention ensure that progress is being made uh, make sure that you're seeing the performance um, against the metrics that you have set make sure you're seeing, making sure that performance is being met um, mm. and make sure that you know you're having open dialogue with your partners to to continually optimize um, and refine and that's again why you know it's important to think of your ssp partner as a partner and not just a tech vendor because mm. you're hopefully building a long-term relationship here. Okay. Brilliant, thanks for that. You're welcome. Um, so we have some time for questions now. Um, so we've got a couple in already, but if you have any um, more pressing questions for Emma, do take the chance to um, get us to now. But, um, submit these via the questions tab on the GoToWebinar platform um, and I'll pick these up as we go along. But um, Emma, let me ask you some of the questions that already come in. Um, so one um, audience member has said, um, I'm afraid of inadvertently shutting off valuable access to publishers. Um, what questions should we be asking SSPs in framing this SPA process? Well, I think that first and foremost, understand which are your most valuable publishers so and is it about you know and, and what is it you're actually trying to buy so you know most when you when you talk to most buyers and i was i was a buyer back in the day when i was in marketing it was really about reaching an audience um and so it's not necessarily about the publisher per se of course it is you know, very important for lots of reasons but it's about okay what, what is the audience i'm trying i'm trying to to reach and so be really clear about that and then have those conversations with the ssp and say look this is either this is the audience that i want or this is the inventory that i want or this is the publisher that i want um and yes you know most ssps um pubmatic definitely you know we're very open about how you can act you know which publishers we have in our portfolios which audience segments you can reach um, so just have a have a conversation and make sure. So first and foremost, you know, are you are you duplicating effort? Um, I think it's really about having that conversation with the SSP and you know, sharing with them that this is what I'm trying to achieve. This is what I'm trying to buy. Um, and you'll, I think, hopefully, if you you know, if you're talking to the right kind of SSP, they're going to be open and transparent about whether you can access that inventory through them or not. And therefore. Yeah when you choose to consolidate you won't be shutting off the inventory that you think is really important to you mm, okay great thank you for that um and then another question that's come in um 
first kind of how do you know you've reached your optimal point? Um, is there any indication that you can you can give them on, on that? Sorry, I you cut out me there. Can you say that? I got to optimal. Yeah. Point. So how how do you know you've reached your optimal point? In terms of in terms of SPO, I guess in terms of assessing um, the supply. Yeah, I think that's going to be trial and error, as with everything. I think if you start off with a very clear view about what your end game is, and as I said earlier on, it's not one size fits all, um, and there are multitude there are a multitude of combinations, if you like, of end metrics. But I think if you're fairly clear about what your your end game is, then it's a case of, again of a little bit of trial and error. Um, making sure that you're working with partners who are prepared to share data with you that enables you to make informed decisions as to whether you've reached your optimum point. I don't actually think there is an optimum point, to be honest. I think the industry that we work in is so dynamic. Um, and things evolve so quickly that it really is a case of making sure that, you know, you're looking at the data uh, regularly. You're working with partners who can help you analyze that data. Mm. Uh, and I just think that really it's not a case of you just can't sit back on your laurels. This is a sit forward, lean in uh, thing that has to be managed. Um, but start off by understanding what it is you want to achieve. I think that's a good point. Okay, brilliant. Um, another question here, what is the biggest obstacle to SPO implementation? I don't think there's one overwhelming obstacle. I think that when we asked respondents about their biggest challenges, it was really about not having effective tools um, to implement and manage SPO. So again, that's, you know, work with a partner that's gonna help you with that. Um, I think sometimes it's a lack of company support. Again, I think that that's about prioritization. So if you are confident and clear about the, I guess, the return that the that the SPO will deliver to your organization. Um, that will help drive support. Um, I think there's still concern about the risks. I think you referenced that earlier. You know, am I going to shut off inventory that's really valuable to me? You know, am I going to potentially not know whether I've reached my optimum point? So I think there are concerns about risks. Um, and also, you know, there's some uncertainty about the benefits. So Again, do lots of research, speak to partners that have implemented SPO in the past, speak to partners who will help you implement SPO, look at case studies, have open conversations, treat them as consultants to some extent because they've done this more than you have. So they're, you know, a good partner will come and share with you their experiences. Um, so, yeah, I think it's early days. So we're all sort of learning as we go along. But again, yeah. I one there's no one overwhelming obstacle i think you know we as an industry have a have a responsibility to help to help buyers with this yeah definitely and i think the research reflects that as well i mean we're very much in the early stages very much in an evaluation stage in, in the uk and um, we did this research in the us as well and that shows you know kind of an advanced market and um, as you might expect but um, yeah, I, I agree, and I think the industry does need to kind of band together to, to work out what SPO is and, and, and the value of it. Um, another question is around the process. So this audience member says, how should a brand um, slash advertiser start the process if they're just sorting out their tech stack part um, and will be ready to move forward to optimise the SSP part now? Um, I think they need to educate themselves first and foremost. Mm. So I don't think this is something that you know brands should rush into. I think there are um, there's enough content out there right now to you know take some time to go and you know, read, understand what's going on, understand the options that are out there. Um, speak to your agencies obviously you're you know you're hoping that your agencies have a have a point of view and most of them do certainly all the ones that we've been talking to in the UK have mm. a point of view around this um, so I think first and foremost start the conversations once you've, you've done some research um, it's much easier then to actually understand what people are saying back to you it will also help you I think 
formulate, um, it will help you understand what you don't know. So I think that's part of the biggest challenge. And I think that's also one of the obstacles actually is that, you know, brands are very aware, actually not aware in fact, they don't know what they don't know. Mm. So I think okay. start, start with some education yourself and then, and then go and choose some partners that you trust to have an open dialogue with. Okay, great. Um, thank you for that advice. Um, the next question is, um, Top three reasons to choose an SSP and how many SSP partners is the optimum number? <laughs> well, I'm obviously going to say just you only need one, which is problematic. Um, <laughs> um, so I think that, again, it's a bit like that, you know, I don't think there is an optimum number. It, it will depend on, on your circumstances. Um, I think if people ask us, we generally say between five and eight. Again, it depends what you want to buy. So some inventory can only be accessed through certain SSPs. If you really want to consolidate, um, think about choosing omnichannel SSPs. So SSPs like Pubmatic who access pretty much all formats across all platforms. Um, and some of the questions you should be asking definitely is around you know inventory quality i think that's hugely important so what is an, what is the ssp doing to manage the quality of the inventory that runs through their platform mm. um speak to the ssp about how transparent they're prepared to be um because again that's really really key and actually i know this probably sounds a little bit lame but you know, choose ssps or choose, like everything in life work with people that you like um and that you trust i think mm. that's often overlooked um the importance of of working with people that you like and you trust and the team that you trust is going to give you advice um sometimes you're not going to like it mm. um, sometimes it may actually be to that ssp's detriment but i think that's a good barometer of whether you've chosen somebody who's in it for the long term who's prepared to be a partner so yeah mm. i think yeah work with, I, People work, people buy and work with people. I think that's really, really key. Okay, brilliant. Um, and then we've got a question around the ad stock text graph we showed. So I'll just put that back there. Um, does the agency slash buyer slash brand not have a responsibility here? Um, surely they should only be spending on the 27% that have implemented the ad stock text. I think that's more of a statement but do you have any any thoughts on that so i think that so do they have a responsibility for ads.txt um i think they have a responsibility to buy that buy that inventory so i think if a um if a publisher or an uh, an app developer you know is doing everything that they can do to ensure that their inventory is being bought and sold via accredited partners. I think that if they're doing everything that they can do to provide brand safe environments, um, which by the way, you know, it's not an inconsiderable cost on anybody's part, um, but I think publishers are really responding very well to the demands of the buy side reasonable demands um i then think that uh, you know the buyers have a responsibility to then buy that inventory um mm. and support those publishers mm. okay great thank you for answering that one um we've got one last question um so google dv360 is ever growing in our dutch market and has an end solution and products throughout the entire supply chain. Uh, the question is, how are SSPs going to compete with platforms without having seamless integrations like Google has? Oh, that's a question that keeps us all awake. Um, <laughs> I think it's, oh God, if I had the answer to that, I probably would be doing something else. Um, I think that, you know, SSPs need to understand the value that they're bringing. Um, not all publishers want to work in a closed ecosystem. Uh, publishers have started to think about 
you know, what the alternatives are. I don't think everybody wants to put all of their eggs in one basket. I think that, and buyers as well, actually, by the way, we often hear that buyers want alternatives too. Mm. So I think, you know, what SSPs can do there is about be really clear about what it is that they are bringing. What is it, what is it the value? What value are they bringing to the table? Um, you know, how are they ensuring that, how are they working with publishers to ensure that buyers can access them through routes other than Google? You know, and how are, how are publishers working with SSPs to ensure that they make their inventory available through routes other than Google? Mm. Um, you know, I don't think you know, Google's gonna go away. So we need to be more robust. Um, I think we need to understand what our strengths are and the value that we're bringing and not be afraid to you know, come out and, and really talk about that very publicly and, you know, and show that and work in partnership with people. I think that's what's really important. I think that SSPs outside of that stack, um, we often hear that you know, publishers want partners. They don't just want a ticketing system or a black box. So I think that's definitely something that SSPs can do to help combat that is to you know be open, be transparent, work in partnership, um, and provide a credible alternative. Mm, okay, great. And we've got one final question that's just come in. Um, how does your view? How, in your view, does Web fit into assurance around quality of inventory? Sorry, say that again. How does, in my view, does Jikwebs? In your view, how does Jikwebs fit into assurance around quality of inventory? Well, we've just received our JICWEBS accreditation in the UK, um, so we obviously think it's that we think it's an important part, but it is a part. So there are many other things that you know you need to also be to be aware of. So um, I think it's a piece of the puzzle. Mm, okay, brilliant. Um, that's all the questions um, that have come in. Thank you, everyone, for, for submitting those. Um, Emma, I think we'll wrap up there. So thank you so much for your insight into SPO and all the contacts around the research. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you very much. So I'd also like to thank everyone for listening and joining this morning. Um, as a reminder, you'll receive a recording of the session in your inbox tomorrow. Um, the report is also out now. So please go to the DGA or the Brexit website to download. Um, and yeah, please share the research with your colleagues and um, re-listen to this webinar and um, appreciate your time. Thanks again and have a great rest of the day.